one of my favorite quotes from David Bell is he said, parkour is a training method for warriors. Yeah. And I always thought, whoa, man, that's the idea that resonated with me. But if you look at parkour today, it has nothing to do with a warrior mentality. You get a couple, a couple tracers, a couple organizations that train really tough, but it's about freedom and fun and, and of course, challenges. And believe me, like what some of the tracers in the world do today are world-class challenges that, you know, a warrior couldn't do. You know, think of like yeah. the traditional, whether it's samurai or Roman warrior or gladiator, they couldn't do it, you know, so bravo for the physical achievement. But the warrior mentality doesn't seem to be a part of the parkour culture that much okay yeah. what do you think do you, do you do you have what is your opinion on that so honestly um i've been reading some stuff recently where it said um that uh you know like kung fu mm. it's being badly translated so okay so when you say that kung fu is just martial art you know that that's where it's wrong. Kung Fu means um is it anything that's achieved through um like through difficulty, if you see what I'm saying. So for example, a person that's really good at playing the piano, that's Kung Fu. Do you see what I mean? And so the goal of it is to become the best version of yourself. Mm. Um if you start to sort of like think about that a little bit more, and you just think, well actually yeah, I can do that with both parkour, martial arts, flips, whatever, and become the best version of myself. Maybe actually that all of them will work together. And yeah, there's no there's no real need to put a label on it anymore. If you yeah. If you see what I'm saying. Well, I agree. I agree. I don't do we disagree on anything here? Don't think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was simply commenting on this idea that this training mentality you had, I also had, yeah. and it didn't really, that didn't catch on. No. In the hardcore world. <laughs> no, no, and it's worse because it's, it's not, you can't make money out of it. I mean, just, let's face it, if, if you're going to bore people with something that's too physical, it's just, you're already... Um, eliminating about 50% of the people that are interested because some of them just don't want to do anything like just that level of physical. So they're, they're already out of the door by their second class, you know. You, sure. So, yeah, you're much better off just showing them what they can achieve by, you know, by either doing it yourself in front of them or and giving them like little bits of that away, in my opinion, obviously. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, look, how many, I, I always, this was so dumb, you know, I was what I was like a young 20 year old kid, you know, you know, early 20s. But I said, parkour, this was in my mindset. I was like, parkour is never going to be big. This was, this is literally what I told myself. I said, parkour will never be big because nobody wants to bleed. And what I noticed is every time I did parkour, I bled, like physically. I would scratch my hands or scrape my knees or something. Like the first 10 sessions I ever did in my life, I came back with a bloody something, elbow or knee or whatever. And I thought, man, I was like, this is really tough. Yeah. And I, I knew intuitively that most people weren't made to have that level of physical maybe challenge in their life. And so I was like, ah, parkour is never going to take off. But then, of course, I learned to, I grew to learn that parkour was fun and people adopted it that way. So I changed my view. But you know, the original parkour way that how I conceptualized it was what what you're saying was it was tough and I recognized that most people wouldn't yeah. wouldn't adopt that way. True. Yeah. I mean, there is there is a lot to be said about you know, pushing yourself in a in a difficult kind of circumstance as well. Because I mean, you can't just do parkour when the weather's nice, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is fun to train in the ice or in or in the the rain or you know it's a different kind of movement mm. and uh it's a it's a different kind of achievement as well it's not just landing it's landing and making sure that your balance is perfectly where it's where it touches whatever it is you're landing on yeah 
I have to throw out I have to throw out another David Bell quote because this one's so apt for the conversation. He told me one time he said parkour is like pulling three all-nighters in a row. Right. So not sleeping for 3 days and then having to do the biggest jump of your life. And I want to tie this together with this idea that you made me realize is that I think the warrior spirit is the essence of parkour. And I think without the warrior spirit, I don't think it would have launched the way it has. It needed some type of, of fire, some type of, of molten ember that then able, was able to burn, you know, spread and burn down the forest. And I think that's what David Bell had. And that's, he got that from his father, obviously from Raymond. It's okay that that's, that's, that's dissipated. You know, I, I think the core of it though, is that warrior spirit is the training method for warriors is the doing your biggest jump after not sleeping for three days. I think, I think that's it kind of this core ethos, this core energy of, of the movement that launched it, yeah. but it's clearly not ubiquitous in the parkour world today. Yeah. 